And guys, welcome to the Sophie Bot podcast. If you missed it, can I get some reacts? So, welcome to the Sophie Bot podcast. I'm yours, Ivan Amkasa, and I know it's been long. It's been long, but now we can finally talk again. As usual, I'm sitting at Nylab, saying hi to Josephine. Say hi to Josephine. Josephine says hi. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, invite your friends. Invite your friends' friends, and let's start talking about sexual health. Yes. If you don't know who we are, we are artificial intelligence to answer your questions on sexual and reproductive health. But to do this once in a while, to keep with our core mission, and that is to drive open and honest conversations on sexual health. And today's discussion is livid. Can I livid? Yeah, it's lit or livid. Can I start by thanking? Can I start by by thanking our two guests last time? Tamara and Faith, big shout out, big shout out again from Sophie Bot. And before I begin, and I'll finish off with this, you're listening to Pierre Jamie. We exclusively feature his music on our podcast. So, what's the discussion today? FGM. It's one of the biggest discussions out there. One of the biggest discussions out there. But before I go into that, I should tell you about something. A good friend of mine called Grace is trying to solve mental health. It's Mental Health Month. She's trying to solve mental health. And she's running a crowdfunding platform. And I'll tell you the link to the crowdfunding platform at the end of this podcast. We're good. We're good. And yeah, I'm telling Grace we'll, we'll feature you on the podcast. That's it. Um, okay, awesome. So today our conversation is on FGM, female genital mutilation. If you remember last time, us uh, we we mentioned it a bit. We mentioned it a little bit while we were having that talk with Faith and Faith and Tamara. But then I wanted to, I wanted to host an entire podcast on it because it's 
another recurring issue on sexual and reproductive so feel free to let me know how you feel about this discussion as you go along if you have any questions as you go along let me know so today i'll start with a story and its title is the day i wore my new dress by maggie black i want, want to join us want to join our podcast want to join our podcast <laughs> So, uh, and the title of the, of the story is the way the, the day i wore my new dress by maggie black and it starts by fatima is a young mother whose first baby was premature and stillborn but a second a healthy boy came to term and survived she is against circumcision but the experience for her was horrendous her mother was a seamstress and usually went off to work in the morning Evening, when she was aged six, she gave her a new dress and told her to wear it the following day. Fatima, I was very happy with my dress. I had no idea what was going to happen. Then my mother told me she will stay home that day and not go to work. And I was more happy. Then she said, I need to go to Quranic school today. I was even happier. I remember that a fat woman came. She started talking to my mother and my mother was cooking, laughing and drinking tea. Everyone was happy. And my mother gave me some nice food. Then after a time, she told me to go to the bathroom and have a shower. She said she did not want the woman to see me dirty, so I should wear my new dress. My grandmother arrived. She told me I was to be circumcised. But I did not understand. She said, now you will be like everybody else. You will not be left behind. Then they got ready. They held me at my shoulders and at the knees. And I started crying and trying to close my legs. It was very terrible. I can never forget that day. Fatima falters as she recalls the trauma trauma she picks up the story only after the worst was over i was at home for seven days with acute pain in the area they had cut i was not allowed to drink water i could not eat any solid food fatima and her friends do discuss circumcision people know it's dangerous and brings danger uh, it brings difficult but they hear this on the radio they're the ones who sh- that th- those who say we should stop but if it was up to me, I would say, don't do this to your daughters. But I'm afraid society will not accept. My mother knows there are problems, but she believes it's a rule. She thinks it's shameful to live with the genital area open. She always insists that we have to close it. Once a disclaimer, Fatima's name has been changed to respect her privacy. And that brings us to a discussion. Hope, hope, hope that was an interesting discussion. Just to give us context. Just to give us context on what you're talking about. So FGM has been a topic of discussion, but how many of us knew? Uh, how many of us know the actual implications of FGM? And hope for Timo's story, not her real name, will help us. Will help us. Will help us. Uh, will help us give give us context and roger is saying nitume salamu radio style so yeah rogers hi thank you for joining us and hope you join the discussion uh your yeah, discussion so yeah yes i am the one hosting the podcast i think amukasa is the one hosting the podcast so if that was your question yes that's your answer uh yeah fgm is a big issue and yesterday night we also got to talk about uh, we also got uh, there's a news feature on it and they're talking about the health implications of fgm so i want us to go over the full scope of fgm and and uh, and get insights and actually get insights. so fgm is defined as the procedure of involving removing partial or total removal of female genitalia or other injury to the female genital organs that's the entire scope of of fgm fgm 
in a certain country here fgm prevalences are about 95 percent and it's performed on girls aged 4 to 11 and it has a lot of adversarial effects both physically mentally and psychologically and psychologically the health consequences of fgm are both immediate and lifelong despite many international recognized laws because in kenya it's actually illegal to actually perform fgm lack of validation in other in other advocacies to eradicate the uh, practice makes fgm still embedded in a lot of our cultures though there's a lot of advocacy to go uh, trying to trying to get us against fgm um at mo it's usually practiced as a social it's it's actually practiced as a social ritual in 28 countries ranging from africa to the middle east and some islamic asian countries and the most severe form of the practice affects over 130 million women 130 million most of whom, whom was circumcised before they even hit puberty uh, because the laws are against it you find most cases it happening in remote rural areas by untrained until mil village midwives remember fatima's story the fat woman who visited her home like that's a, a, a bad, bad description a fat woman visits her home and all of a sudden it's they they want to actually perform fgm on her um uh, so um where was i and sometimes it gets screwed People use instruments such as uh, knives, razors, and even broken glass. That's that, that that's that's how crazy. That's how crazy it is. So any, uh, I hope we get the scope right now. It's it's not a an imaginary problem. It's a problem that exists today. And Fatima's story only serves only serves to drive that or only serves to to show how big that conversation is mm. Mm. Uh -huh. and yes so let's get into specifics the operation involves the total removal of the clitoris labia minora and severing of the inner side of the labia majora so the major labia and the minor labia basically is the sides of the labia the sides of the labia majora are then sutured together leaving a small hole to allow urine and menstrual discharge to pass so it's not just cutting of the labia majora or the removal of the clitoris Ah, Joffrey, welcome to the conversation. It's also not just uh, removal of the uh, of the clitoris or the labia majora. It's also sewing the inner side of the labia majora. Sewing, that's the sew suture. Sewing the inside of the labia majora, leaving a small hole to allow for urine and menstrual discharge to pass. To pass. The practice often occurs without the use of anesthesia. Anesthesia, basically drugs that makes the area numb so that you don't feel the procedure happening because it's ha it happens in rural in in deep rural areas using crude tools you cannot factor in for, for that and the effects are major beyond the obvious initial pain of the procedure the long there's the long-term psychological sexual and uh, physiological sexual and psychological effects of fgm and their well documentation in some cases, a uh, high, 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 Joffrey. In some cases also include death, a result of shock, shock, hemorrhage, and septicism. Shock from the event. Uh, uh, shock from the event. As hemorrhage, losing of blood from from the from the cut labia majora clitoris, and uh, and also septicemia means infection of the blood long term complications include the loss of libido fast because um, it's a discussion we keep having 
and we believe the main reason of sustenance of the practice is purely it's purely patriarchal to rob women of from the actual pleasure of of sex because yes one of the long term uh, implications is loss of the libido genital malformation delayed uh, 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 chronic and pelvic complications and recurrent utis we had a discussion on utis two podcasts ago please make sure you check them out so i didn't talk about fgm uh, fgm then but so happen people women who have undergone through fgm female genital mutilation have recurrent cases of uti so get that right and it's a long term it's a long term uh, long term effect yeah. fgm oh, and it doesn't end at the point of at the point of at the point uh, uh, at just uh, performing sexually FGM victims are also prone to obstetric complications that complications during birth because the fetus is exposed to a range of infectious diseases and they face the risk of having its head crushed in the da- uh, or damaged in the birth canal remember it is suited the li- insides of the sides of the liver majority is suited so during birth the complication is that is that the child during actual normal birth its head might be crushed or damaged in the birth canal because it's suited there's no space to actually expand uh, infibulated women whose genitals have been tightly closed have to be cut open to allow the baby to emerge so perennial tears obstructed labor and fistula can also occur the repeated cutting and stitching of a woman's genital with each birth with each birth can result in tough scar tissue imagine you have one wound that keeps being teared apart and stitched together teared apart and stitched together teared apart and stitched together uh in addition to direct adverse health effects fgm also increases the woman's biological vulnerability to hiv transmission if exposed to the hiv virus so women who actually women who actually who actually undergo fgm at a higher higher get higher risk uh, at a higher biological risk of contracting hiv and aids so it's not just about it's not just about the pain the long term and health implications can i go on a thread because so in there uh, a few weeks ago, a, f- a month ago we got into an argument with guys who are calling who are calling ma- uh, male circumcision male genital mutilation i was like why Comp- and you have you seen the implication and the lens that are taken to do fgm compare that with male, male circumcision does not make sense in essence even male uh, male circumcision has been proven to lower risk factors not to make you completely safe from the lower risk the lower risk factors of contracting with hiv disease on the other hand fgm actually um, increases 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 Uh, FGM increases vulnerability to actually contract HIV and AIDS and that is just the physical and physiological implication long term physical and physical implications of FGM I'll give you a second to think about that let's 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 take let's think about that for a second <sighs> the medical effects of the practice so all effects can all all fact, all, all factors are separated into the four the medical effects of the practice the physiological effect of the practice the dangerous residential practices that accompany fgm and the cultural stigma the cultural stigma that associated with girls who are not circumcised remember what in my story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so as as mentioned uh, medical complications is 
tetanus infections leading to that severe bleeding during the procedure and later during the infibulation uh, that is when stitching and tearing apart the the the, the suitors the suitors uh, complications including childbirth inability to urinate septicemia infection of the blood uh, sometimes leading to death severe muscle contractions and difficulty in breathing it, as i said before increased likelihood of getting hiv and aids if that unsterilizing equipment is used uh, in one case study the circumciser performed FGI SGM on five young girls consecutively with none of them being HP positive positive. Do you see that it's the main link between HIV and the FGM and HIV and AIDS is the heat and variability of transmission. However, it also comes from the increase, uh, increased uh, incidence of the urinary tract. So, physiological effects include, uh, include include from both men and women include the pain and trauma of the procedure, which almost no one is prepared for. Remember Fatima's story, and can have lifelong effects. And the infibulation session is also is also crazy. In one of these key studies, is a husband is taunted by his family for being unable to have sex with his circumcised wife because the urinary tract is that small. He responds by forcing violent intercourse on her and her obvious pain and screaming, traumatizing to the extent they cease to have a sexual relationship. It's that deep. They also soon divorced and his man mental health deteriorated steadily. So in this case, the husband is unable to infibulate his wife and eventually commit suicide. It's, it's that crazy. It's that crazy. Uh, and the last is traditional practices. There are many dangerous and traditional practices associated with FGM and they are highlighted in the number of case studies. In one of them, a family of, seven, of a seven-year-old girl in Kismayu placed her above an open fire in order to apply smoke to her genitalia to allow for urine to pass. It's, it's that crazy. Her genitalia becomes badly burned and she dies as a result. They call, um, and it's crazy. In another case, it's, it's a disgrace for a man to be unable to infibulate, like tear the suitors. And there's also cultural stigma. We struggle to in the in, um, pe we find girls who try to go against the game are stigmatized by their own community. So unless they leave that community, they have nothing else to do. So that's that's crazy. And that's all for today. I remember I was telling you about mental health matters. The link is m dot m e dot m a m dot m e dot mhm matters and you'll find them get details about the crowdfunding how much they're willing to raise and how much you can help and with that short shortest podcast go out there and openly and honestly have conversations on sexual and productive health goodbye